And welcome back to Test This Tuesday Tips. We're coming to you from uh, the California Association uh, Taxidermist sh Annual Show, or the CAT Show. And we're up here in, uh, where are we at? Woodland. Woodland? Woodland. Woodland, California. And you know, one of the greatest things about going to the show, probably I think the best, better than just competing and improving your taxidermy, is the friendships you make and the people you run into. So I'm sure a lot of you what are you looking over your shoulder? Oh, I look for people. people. <laughs> so a lot of you guys, I'm sure anybody that's living and breathing in taxidermy knows who Ken Walker is. And um, I don't think he needs an introduction, but just in case, this is Ken Walker, world champion taxidermist, form carver, squatch watcher. What else do you do? Um, Stand-up comedian and musician, right? Yeah, I've done a little bit of that. You just. You know, just anything to keep me from getting bored. Yeah. So, I mean, I get to run into him. I get to hang out with him, besides at the seminars. And we like to talk about, besides taxidermy, we like to talk about comedy, and but mostly Bigfoot. And yep. Yeah, Sasquatches. Sasquatches. And, yeah. and um, anyway, oh, hey, whoa! So you never know what's going to happen. You're I just, good. You're I good. just sank. You're good. <laughs> Now I'm even shorter. They said there was quicksand in California, so there you go. Yeah. But anyway, so why don't you tell us a little bit about all your projects you got going on, Ken? Well, I got, always got something on the go. Uh, first of all, it's just it's very cool to be down here in uh, California. I was lucky enough to uh, to win a bunch of awards at this show last year, so I offered to judge. Um, haven't been doing a lot of judging jobs, but... Uh, we judged one of my original... 15, 16 years ago. Yeah, well, I, I judged twice at Reading yeah. when, when yeah. Uh, back in back in the day when I was like when I was at the Smithsonian. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, no, I just love coming to Northern California, all through California. And, I, coming and you've been around. I just understand you just got back. Why don't you tell them tell us about that big job you just did overseas? Where it was? I just uh, I just did a job in uh, I just I was invited to China. Uh, and they wanted to know some of my techniques for mounting uh, panda bears. So I actually got to skin and tan and, and carve and mount uh, giant, uh, one giant panda and a couple of lesser pandas and just experienced the whole thing in China. So it was pretty cool. It was, it was, a, it was quite an experience. They, you know, of, of course, I've done a recreation panda for mm -hmm. the World Taxidermy Championships, which I was fortunate enough to win with. Uh, but now I have, they, they let me keep all my casts and everything, so now I have everything I need to make perfect scientific model pandas now. If I'm wow, working. wow. Yeah, so it was, yeah. it, was, it was amazing. I forget you're also known for recreating like prehistoric animals, extinct animals, and of course my most impressive one, you did a uh, authentic reproduction of uh, the Patterson-Gimlin Bigfoot, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I did, I did. Um, I don't know how impressive it is. I. I I'll probably go over it. I could have done a little better job. I rushed it a little bit, but no. I I took the Patterson film of the the, the famous Sasquatch film right. uh, that was here in California. Right. And uh, basically, I made a template uh, of of you know that took the, the foot, mm -hmm. and I measured all of the pieces in the in the still photographs and came up with a uh, measurement template, mm -hmm. which turned out to be identical to the one John Green built. Uh, and so basically what's in that film, I translated it to foam and everything else and I, I built it. I, you That's know. awesome. Yeah. And then you were working on a documentary, but I don't know whatever happened to oh, it. Oh, it's, it's, it's Big Fur. Yeah. What's it called? Big Fur? Uh, a, a guy named Dan Wayne did a, a, a documentary following me around called mm -hmm. Big Fur. And uh, it had to do with building that and a bunch of other stuff. It mm -hmm. was, uh, it's it's in the can. It's, it's being, uh, you know, uh, being test screened and all that—it's not my movie. I don't know what what you know what they're gonna do with it, but uh, but yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's coming out sooner or later. Yeah. And see, Bigfoot's really popular right now with all the shows yeah. on TV. And last year we got to talking about it because we said, you know, most people that have a Squatch experience or Bigfoot don't ever talk about it because people do think you're crazy. Oh, tons of people have seen it. Like uh, uh, I, I just do my investigations in the hunting community and. Uh, I've met all kinds of people. I've met people who've, uh, lots of people who've seen them. I've met people who've shot them. Uh, yeah, I've, I've follow, I, I, I follow any kind of a story that could 
lead to evidence that's you know other than just the anecdotes the anecdotes right. are everywhere but right. Right. I, I keep who knows one of these days I might just get lucky yeah and you think that they're like we were discussing last year you think they're close to they'll prove it someday right I think they know about it personally that's what I, my own personal yeah. feeling is they absolutely know it exists I mean if I can find the thing then they've already found it you know mm -hmm. but I think it would cause so much turmoil if they admitted it really existed, maybe in their minds that, you know, who knows? Who I would like to know why, but it, it probably has environmental reasons that's and what industry. I'm guessing. And, yeah, that's what I'm I mean. There, there is a lot of reasons to I keep mean, it covered up. They would protect all the four. You know what I mean? It would just create a cluster. I have anecdotal evidence of them knowing. Uh -huh. um, I don't try. I don't pursue those avenues because I really don't want to be on their radar in case I do find one. Exactly, man. Because yeah. in the men in the black suits that don't exist yeah. will show up at our door. <laughs> Don't but be anyway, surprised. Um, yeah. Well, listen, I know that everyone's trying to talk to you here and there and everywhere and get their critiques. One of the downsides of being a judge, but um, I'm having fun. Oh, appreciate. Oh, wait, here we got an example. This yeah, is what I wanted to show. Special guest here. Ken just sculpted this today. Oh. This is Ken's For one of the significant seminars. other. Yeah, this is a. I did a seminar on, on mammal carving, and so uh, basically, I just did a demonstration on how to make. Uh, a matrix, you know. So basically, what I do is I just carve an animal, uh, or I just trace an animal, and then make templates, and then carve it in pieces. And then what I can do with this thing is I can uh, I can alter it. Thank you, my lovely assistant. You know, and then I can I can alter the legs into whatever poses. See, like this one, you, you have to guess what he's doing. Anyways, I have no idea. Yeah, um, you're a funny guy, <laughs> Kim. <laughs> funny haha or funny peculiar? Now, what do you mean funny, huh? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean, funny, haha? -ha? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Funny, peculiar, yeah. 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 Um, anyways, so that's what we do. We put, inlay the rods into there and, and uh, you know, carve the head out and put the eyes in here. And so, yeah, this was kind of a, a fun little project that I did for the... Yeah, and he's known, I forgot to mention that, because you do so much. How can you get it all in a five minute, ten minute interview? Yeah. But he's also known for this, the way he carves his every, I think almost every life size you do, right? Uh, well, make, a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, most of them? Yeah. Quite a few of them, yeah. Yep. All my competition stuff that right. I won with right. is pretty right. much big carved. Because your philosophy was if you're going to get dinged, you'd rather have it on you yeah. than get dinged for something in a mannequin or something that you can't have any control over. It's hard to own your successes when you're owning somebody else's mistakes. Right. right. You know, so that's just, you know. Yeah. But, I, I've, you know, I've kind of gotten to the point now where I just, you know, Rick Crane asked me, he said, what's the best one piece of advice you give to a competitor? You had one piece of advice and you kind of stumped me but I, I basically what I said was never mount anything for a judge <laughs> you know you know what they asked me on an interview the other day what would you tell a, a kid or something starting out and I told them rule 62 it's an actual rule it's like don't take yourself too seriously and then I said and then be who you are and start there and then you'll be okay was it Emerson said make the most of yourself because that's all there is of you <laughs> Well, anyway, thanks for taking the time to chat with me. Oh, hey, yeah, you're welcome. And, guys, I hope you enjoy this video because it really is interesting. Look him up, and uh, we'll see you next time on Testus Tuesday Tips. Beautiful, man. One shot nailed it.